Hey guys, I'm going to show you a small prototype I just built of uploading files using GraphQL. I first thought this was impossible, but there's this library called Apollo Upload Server, which makes it really easy to have your Express um, GraphQL server handle file uploads or image uploads, any of those. So here is just a quick, and this is basically as lightweight as you can get it. Here is my index.js, and I'll walk you guys through the back end code, the front end code, and the whole thing of how I got this to work so you can run this for yourself. And I'll also put this code on GitHub if you'd like to check it out. Okay, so this is looks very similar to how you create a regular Apollo server if you know how to do that. The only difference is this line right here, line 20, where I say Apollo Upload Express and I provide a uploader. So this guy is coming from this library I was talking about. And here we just specify where we'd like to upload files. So for me, I put dot slash, that means the current directory. So I'm gonna get files that get downloaded here. So whenever I upload a file, it's gonna pop up right here in the same folder. But if I wanted to, I could say, you know, I could do a squiggly and do my documents folder if I wanted to. Um, pretty much anywhere I want to, I can have it download to. So you pass that string. And so we're getting a schema and the resolvers like you would in a regular GraphQL scenario. And we're creating a GraphQL endpoint. We're still using Apollo Data Server. That's this guy right here, GraphQL Server Express. And we're passing in the schema and then we're listing on port 3030. So let's take a look at the schema and resolvers. Uh, schema looks very basic and you'll notice you can ignore the query it was making me create a query so I just have a hello world query basically but all I'm doing here is a mutation where I'm uploading a file an upload file mutation and uh, you'll notice it takes an upload type this is an input type right here this is mandated by the library you have to have it like this this exact shape for the object um, and you use that as your input so that's how the uh, basically the library tells that you're uploading a file. And then here I'm just passing back a boolean, true or false, whether the file correctly uploaded. And then my resolver, here, here's all it is. Um, my query, of course, you can ignore that, but in my mutation, I'm just saying upload file. And I actually don't need to handle the uploading. This is middleware right here, and the middleware itself handles the actual upload. It does it for me. But what it will do is it will go ahead and pass the file object here in case I wanted to do anything with it. And then I'm just returning true that it works. So the, pretty much the only thing that's special about the server, the resolver is not anything special, um, is you have to have this input upload thingy. Um, you can call this whatever you like, but it just needs to have the shape. Um, or at least I think you can name this anything else. In their example, you, they use upload. So I'm actually not sure if you can change this or not. You probably can though. Maybe not, I don't know. Give it a try. Um, and then Apollo Upload Express, have that middleware in there. So now I'll show you, um, you also need the client for this to actually send this over. So here is a quick and dirty React application. Um, it has two files in it, an index and the app.js. You can see, here's a side panel of everything. And get rid of this npm debug. Okay, so here is my index.js. All I'm doing here is I'm creating a network interface. And you'll notice normally this comes from React Apollo, which is normally how you do GraphQL on the front end. The only difference is we're getting this from the upload client. Everything else is the exact same. So notice we create an Apollo provider here, passing in the client, which we created right here. We point this to our endpoint of where our GraphQL server is. I'm running line on port 3030. If we pop back over here, we're listening. You want the same port to match up there and here. Um, and then I'm just rendering my application and that's what's getting rendered in the DOM. Let's check out what the app looks like. So here, to actually uh, basically allow files to be at, you know, an input, I'm using the drop zone. This is a library. I just really like it for handling file uploads. Um, this is what it looks like right here. So it just has, creates a little, little thing. You can click on it. Um, to do stuff, I can go to my desktop and click on a picture and upload it if I want. Or I can drag stuff here. I'll show you the drag, how you drag stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, and then what happens is it gives you a callback. So whenever the user um, drops a file, this is called. 
and it's possible to drop multiple files so um, I'm just grabbing the first file in that array um, I'm destructuring it and then right here I am just calling this dot props dot mutate so here's my mutation here um, I'm expecting a file so if we take back over the schema I'm expecting one parameter a file this upload file so I'm passing the file which is a variable and the type is an upload um, type and then all we do is we say this dot props dot mutate passing the file in um, that we get from drop zone and then we're passing that as a variable and we pass that to our server um, and then this down here is the same as always if you used GraphQL before um, we have the React Apollo library GraphQL and GQL here we're creating the mutation like I was talking about and then here we're just injecting the mutation inside the app using a higher order component um, and then that's how this dot props that mutate is coming from this mutation props coming from doing this so let's see this guy in action and as you can see I'm console logging oops the resolve right here so we can kind of see this object here is the console um, we can see it pop up when I do it so I'm gonna go ahead and drag a picture I have here my little Timo and note the side right here this is where all the files are you'll notice there's no pictures right there but if I come over here I drag you'll notice how it changes that's react drop zone just the default style so I'm gonna go ahead and drop it here um, and we get no access control allow origin um, we get this error but uh, it still works uh, so I don't I don't know exactly why that's popping up um, but if we come back over here we notice the upload goes through and uh, here's the console log of the file so we get Timo web image the upload um, this is what this console log just showing you the file and we can see the upload file here um, so I don't know if this is just something that graph QL I don't I don't actually know uh, why this is failing to fetch right here um, it, it works just fine I assume I have to like pass the cores or something there's a cores library you can install and then you can do uh, app.cores and then pass a star and then import cores from cores I believe it's something like that um, to get rid of that error but it seems to work without it, so I didn't even bother getting uh, trying to investigate it. Um, so yeah, so now we see this file uploaded here, and if I come over here, I can open it up, and we can see that it's Timo. If we come back over here, here's the file. You'll notice it gives it some random name. Um, that's something they actually the library is terrible on documentation and. I just have a look at the source code and it looks like the source code does not let you um, change the file name and it looks like if you want something you know different um, instead of doing Apollo upload express here so well, let's show you the code here's the two libraries that I'm using so here's the client that we're using on the front end um, here's the server we're using on the back end if we look at his source code here you notice he's using this uh, process request um, is the name of his function and he's handling all the logic here and you can see he's only expecting one parameter uploader um, which we're supplying but instead of doing that what we can do is actually um, grab process request and then put process request here and then implement our own uh, basically our logic for it because if we come back over here they do have one piece of documentation um, that says right here how you can um, grab the process request and then actually do your own um, if you need to do any kind of other thing if you want to handle it basically or you can look at a source code too see how he does it basically copy this in and then change because um, I would want to change what the file name and stuff is so that's what I recommend doing if you want to go further and deeper with this um, I personally don't like uploading files just to the folder like this I prefer using like third-party stuff 
um, when I'm going into production stuff like Cloudinary or AWS. Um, but if you are interested in um, downloading it to your own, basically your computer or if you're running on a server, the same thing that's running the Express server or whatever, come take a look at the Apollo Upload server. Um, I would look more in depth into it. This is a basic example how it works. I'll throw this code up on GitHub so you can check it out. But there's, I'm sure, a lot more. You'll probably want to go in depth with it. This just gives you a taste of how a little starter, how you might get started with it. So I hope that helps, gives you an idea of how you can use this. Um, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.